We're good. Okay. Thank you, Ron. I'd like to recall this regular meeting of the town council order. Would you please all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, God. with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Roxanne, please call the roll. Mr. Dombrowski? Here. Mrs. Ingalls? Here. Mr. Irwin? Here. Mr. Marshall? Here. Mrs. McGratton? Mary, you're muted. <laughs> okay, I can see you're here. Mr. Paul? Here. Mrs. Rodriguez? Here. Uh, Mr. Ryan? Present. Mr. Song? Here. Nine here, zero absent. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have no presentations. Are there any residents or property owners who wish to address the council at this time? Mr. Treister. Good evening. Uh, well, I promise to keep it brief. Uh, Eric Treister, 10 Huntington Way. Uh, I want to talk about two things real quick. Uh, later on this evening on your agenda, you're going to be scheduling a public hearing regarding uh, the setting of, of fees for the Planning and Zoning Commission, building uh, zoning permit fees and so forth. Um, and, and the way the way it's proposed is that the uh, the planning director makes proposes those numbers, and then uh, the commission and the council approve them. And there's a certain and it, it also provides that uh, they, the fees can be waived in order to encourage economic development. And again, the planning director makes that decision with the approval of the planning and zoning commission. In, in my opinion, those are our, our financial decisions. Uh, they also have a, 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 a little bit of political uh, uh, flavor to them because those fees tend to determine how competitive Ledger it is compared with surrounding towns as far as uh, building costs are concerned. And in my opinion, uh, I, I, think, I, think the, I think the town council should establish those fees. Uh, the, 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 uh, the planner and the, and, the, and the planning and zoning commission can recommend them but I, I think that they should, I, I, I think that you should have the authority to set them. And the way they propose, the way the amendment to the ordinance is worded, uh, you can either accept or reject, but you do not have the authority to change. And I, I don't think that's right. I, I, I think it, it's financial. Financial is not part of the, is not appropriate for the Planning and Zoning Commission, just my opinion. Uh, second thing I'd like to talk about briefly is that as you know, the new enabling statutes, if we do nothing, if we do not opt out, will um, uh, uh, allow uh, an accessory dwelling unit to be in, attached to, or detached on any single family home on any lot in Ledger, provided health and safety issues are satisfied. Uh, uh, it would, the, the, if, if detached, it would have to be within the building envelope. What that means is that if a home is in the rear of the lot, the accessory dwelling unit can be in the front yard. It can also be very tiny, it can be a tiny house. Uh, uh, as right now it's 30% of the uh, size of the principal structure. So if you have a 1000 square foot home, you can have a 300 square foot uh, tiny house in the front yard. I personally think that's wrong. I think we should opt out. However, my assessment of what the Planning and Zoning Commission is doing and what the town planner is doing is that they are both, both gung-ho on affordable housing at no matter what. And I do not believe that they are going to conduct the, they, I do not believe that they will schedule the public hearing, which is the, on the subject, which is the required first step in order to make the decision of whether the town should opt out or not opt out. Once they make that decision, if, if they do happen to opt out, uh, the council uh, it can can stop it if it chooses to do so, but my concern is is that there is no momentum whatsoever, and I follow it very closely. There's no momentum whatsoever on the part of the planning and zoning commission and our town planner uh, to to even schedule that public hearing, public workshop maybe, public hearing as required by the statute to opt out no, 
And I, I just want to waive that issue. It, it's, this is, it has the potential for changing the flavor of Ledger uh, uh, in perpetuity. And I think great caution is warranted. And I, I personally think that the town should opt out, adopt regulations to do exactly what we want them to do as far as affordable housing is concerned and, and, and take that approach. But that's not what's going to happen unless people speak up and make some noise that uh, we do not want tiny houses in front yards and, uh, uh, or in rear yards uh, without an appropriate set of regulations. And we can only get those regulations if we opt out first. Just my opinion, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Treaster. Is anyone else like to address the council? Ms. Doblicki, you're muted. Self, I guess I didn't. Okay, I have sent a letter to the council before regarding um, EV charging stations in Gales Ferry. And I would like to make a statement about that tonight. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Do I have to announce where I live and that I'm a yes. resident? Yes, yes, please. My name is Mary Ellen Doblecki and I live at 14 South Linwoods Road in Gales Ferry. Um, during the pandemic, when driving by job lot, I noticed many empty parking spaces. Even now there are more parking spaces than cars. However, there's heavy commuter traffic along Route 12. We need an incentive for commuters to stop and shop. I see that traffic as an opportunity to increase the local business activity there, as well as the businesses across the street, uh, such as the new burger place that is being built as we speak. What could be done to increase consumer traffic to the large stores and the small shops and the businesses across the street? What would make commuters stop? Charging stations for electric vehicles not only generate revenue through charging, but they can also attract new and repeat customers to locations. Charging stations could bring in new customers as well as help meet mediated environmental goals. Studies have shown, and I don't have a source for this, but I've read it many times, that shoppers spend more time at locations with chargers and often prefer to frequent those areas offering EV charging regardless of whether they own an electric vehicle or not. Originally, I thought that we could use the ARPA funds under the category of economic development, which I think this would definitely be. But I've also since found that the ARPA funds can also be used for climate projects. The treasury and administration have provided explicit guidance to indicate to local government that not only are climate projects eligible, but they're an, act they're actively, encouraged use they're an actively encouraged use of ARPA money. Climate projects would classify as an eligible use under infrastructure investment. Specifically, I quote, Treasury encourages recipients to consider green infrastructure investments and in projects to improve resilience to the effects of climate change. It's better yet if it ties in with economic development, obviously. I do realize that John Block Corporation owns the most accessible property for economic, economic development in Gales Ferry. I don't know of an alternative site that would be so accessible. Uh, there are other sources besides ARPA funds. Eversource and United Illuminating are offering a Connecticut EV charging program to incentivize the installation of EV chargers also. Um, I presume that probably Job Lock Corporation uses uh, Eversource, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, they include uh, level two charging stations and direct current fast chargers and all the technical equipment. Um, and also there, is, there are also funds for the actual construction, the digging, the, not the plumbing, but the, um, you know, the digging and the installation. It's a huge project as you would imagine. Um, Connecticut is offering rebates to offset equipment and installation costs associated with EV charging stations. This seems like a good time to do this kind of thing. There are a lot of incentives out there and Gales Ferry could use an upgrade. Uh, I feel like it's the perfect opportunity to increase um, economic opportunity in that area. We have a lot of traffic there. So this would align with Connecticut's plan for the American Rescue Plan as presented Oh, in the Connecticut Development Plan, page 24, number five, it's called Connecticut's Green Tech Investment Fund. This is described as public and private matching funds to invest in emerging companies that specialize in renewable energy, clean tech, and sustainable sustainability. There seems to be an influx of available funding that we could use to attract more consumers to Gales Ferry. 
Um, and I also read recently, and you probably did too in the day, about uh, funds that Kathy Austin, Senator Kathy Austin, um, is uh, bringing back to the fore that is for uh, development in uh, small towns, I think under 30,000 people, and we certainly qualify for that. So there is a lot of funding out there. I am optimistic that we can do this and revive the downtown area of Gales Ferry, which I think uh, looks neglected. I don't know if it is, but it kind of looks it. And um, we could do a lot to improve its appearance and its attractability. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to address the council? Mayor Allen. Kevin, can I, I just um, respond to Mr. Blecky just really quick since uh, I don't know how long you're going to stay on the meeting, but actually on Monday we have a uh, conference call with the governor and uh, former Danbury Mayor Mark Bowden about the uh, Infrastructure Investment Act and part of that funding is for EV chargers. So it might provide a great opportunity for us to uh, tap into that. So I'll update everybody after that uh, Monday call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Anybody else? Seeing. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, comments. Uh, no commission, committee, or board reports. Comments of town councilors. Councilor Soms. Um, I want to uh, second Mr. Treister's concerns about uh, accessory dwelling units. Um, I personally believe from my own experience growing up that when people buy a home, which is often the largest investment in their lives, they have a right to expect that the neighbor they, neighborhood they live in or buy in will continue to look the way it did when they purchased the home. And um, I also wanna add to that, that Ledyard has zoning that supports affordable housing. And in my opinion and experience, the lack of affordable housing that we see in Ledyard is due to the lack of interested developers. It's not for lack of zoning. Um, and I feel that um, residents should get involved and pay attention to this regulation because I, I also believe it will significantly change the look and feel of Ledyard. And, you know, of course, we're not going to see a secondary home at every lot, but if that secondary home or accessory home or unit is next to your house, suddenly it makes a whole lot more difference to you. So I think residents should be paying attention to this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councilors? Okay, seeing none, moving on. Uh, would anybody like to make a motion to approve the meet prior meeting minutes? So moved. Councilor Ryan. Is there a second? I'll second, McGratton. Discussion? Roxanne, please call the roll. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Uh, motion carries. Uh, you have the communication list on the portal. There are no referrals. Um, Council subcommittee liaison reports. We'll start with admin. admin. Admin has not met since the last council meeting, but we do have four items on tonight's agenda. And that is my report. Thank you. Any questions for admin? Community relations. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> the Community Relations Committee, we met via Zoom on Wednesday, March 16th at 6.30 p.m. Um, we will be holding um, our first informational session on April 11th at 6 p.m. Um, and that will feature Parks and Recreation. <clears throat> this is going to be an in-person hybrid meeting, and it's going to be held at the Parks and Rec Senior Center, um, where the director, Scott Johnson, will give an informational presentation on all the programs and services. Um, and we'll uh, be advertising that. You'll be seeing that on the website and, um, and on Facebook. Um, the committee is also putting together a meet your elected officials event. Um, we're trying to get that going. Um, and this we wanna be held at the Nathan Lester house 
um, over coffee and donuts. Um, we originally were going to pick April 30th. However, that date's not going to work. Um, right now, we're looking at maybe May 14th or the 21st. Um, and we want to do that between 10 a.m. and 12. Um, this would be like an inf informational event where the idea um, would be that maybe the mayor uh, would give a small presentation, followed by possibly the, um, the chairman of the council um, and give some introductions to other members of the council. And this would just be kind of a time to chat one on one with people um, and just, you know, answer questions candidly um, about the town and government. Um, so that's what we're working on there. Um, we're also uh, working on both some uh, formal and informal events like the police and everything else we're still working on. Um, and some other business, um, <coughs> Councilor Sons um, informed the committee that um, he and uh, Councilor Rodriguez had met with the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal member Crystal, uh, Crystal Whipple. Um, and they interestingly have uh, formed their own social justice sub team. Um, and that is to address uh, similar issues that our committee um, will be working on. Uh, Councilor Saw um, let us know that uh, um, they are interested in um, holding some informal meetings with us um, like they did before to go over issues and discuss issues like the police and the food pantry and some other issues. Um, so we look forward to doing that um, um, and getting that going. Um, we also, I think uh, Councilor Rodriguez asked um, the mayor to invite the Mashantucket Tribal Council to the celebration of life for Linda Davis as well. <clears throat> the uh, other thing that we did um, with the Black History Month contest, uh, the deadline for the entries for that was on the March 14th. Um, the judges for that um, were uh, Councilor uh, Rodriguez, uh, Sergeant McKinney from the Ledger Police Department and the Tribal Council member and Education Committee Chairman, Crystal Whipple and myself. The judging did take place um, and the winners um, were selected and um, they will be announced and declared at our next council meeting um, April 30th. And we did invite everyone to attend that. Um, and then the other thing we did talk about too was the heating assistance programs um, like TVCCA uh, because of the price of fuel has been astronomical and we've seen some people struggling to pay. We just wanted to get out on the record um, that the, um, they can reach out to the mayor's executive um, assistant, um, social service coordinator, Christine Chapman, Kristen Chapman, um, over at the town hall. She can take applications um, for people. If they qualify, they can get some uh, reimbursement for oil deliveries or some help before the program expires. Um, so we did get that on the agenda. And then the last thing is um, on our agenda for uh, tonight. And that is my report. Thank you, Councilor Paul. Any questions for community relations? Councilor Rodriguez. Okay, I think I heard wrong. The um, winners will be announced at the April 13th town council yes, meeting. April 13th, yep. I thought I heard the 30th, so I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Any other questions? Finance, Councilor Soms. Thank you. Uh, town Council Finance Committee held the first two budget workshops with the mayor, the finance department, and the town department heads on March 10 and 14. Meetings were attended by a majority of the town councilors and by a larger number of residents than usual, which is positive news. The last budget workshop was held on March 17th, and the committee will now focus on the information it received at the workshops and how to further adjust the mayor's uh, proposed budget. At each meeting, committee reviews proposed expenditures, revenues, capital spending with each department head. Several projects were added to the capital plan from the proposed ARPA funding list, um, and with the new modules and ClearGov, it's become easier for all residents and meeting participants to view the budget. Uh, and for Mr. Blackie, we do have the EV charging stations on the list. Thank you very much. And we are continuing to, we got another idea from the mayor uh, this evening. Um, the mayor, the superintendent, the business manager and the town finance department and the HR director met on March 16th to discuss the process for estimating and tracking board of education, employee and retiree health costs. The meeting was attended by the Board of Ed Chair and me and was short but productive. I personally appreciated the candor of people on both sides who admitted that some assumptions had been made, which can often lead to errors in the process. The Assistant Finance Director will begin drafting a written procedure to ensure that the process is documented correctly by all parties and will share it with all attendees before sending it to the Town Council to be added to the Town Procedures Binder. 
The council will also have the option of drafting a policy document to support that written procedure. And then on Wednesday, March 16th at 5 p.m., the committee held its regular meeting by video conference and the finance director reported that tax collection remains ahead of budget, but that dispatch overtime, propane and fuel are over budget at the seven month point in the current fiscal year. The committee continued discussing the criteria for ARPA funded projects, briefly discussed, discussed adding another criterion for projects that would support sustainable community and resilience. Four new projects were added to the list, including charging stations for electric vehicles, replacing the fire department software, adding an LED info sign in Ledyard Center, and hiring clinicians for a three-year period to provide mental health services to children suffering from conditions brought about by the pandemic, remote learning, and now compounded by the war in Ukraine. The committee will continue to evaluate the cost and benefit of each project in town and plans to make its recommendations soon as part of the budget process and everything else is on our agenda for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any questions for finance? Seeing none, land use. Councilor Paul. Uh, yep, land use uh, has a met since our last um, meeting. We'll be meeting on April 4th, uh, but the, we do have uh, one item on the agenda for tonight and that is my report. Thank you. Any questions for land use? Seeing none, liaison reports. Councilor McGratton. Okay, uh, I attended the uh, Youth and uh, Social Services Board meeting uh, earlier this month. Uh, their programs are continuing. The uh, Juvenile Review Board continues to be active. Um, they have a handle on truancy. There is no new cases and the previous cases have received counseling. Um, Kate Sikorsky and three of the uh, master's degree uh, counselors from uh, URI are doing um, counseling. Uh, they have 57 uh, families, active cases, and they have nine on the waiting list. Um, they're trying to, since it's almost the end of the semester, they're trying to interest new counselors from Connecticut and Rhode Island universities. The um, food pantry is um, doing well. It served 88 eligible people in January and 103 eligible in February. They approved their amended bylaws to include a, an affirmative action statement and they elected a new um, board. That's all. Thank you. Any qu questions for Councilor McGrath? Councilor Rodriguez, do you, have, do you have a report? A report. No. Oh, okay. Questions. Very good. Thank you. Councilor Rodriguez. <laughs> the Senior Commission met today at 1.30 and um, renters rebate applications are starting April 1st through October 31st. Forms, can, are, forms are available on the town's website, nursing office, senior housing, and uh, soon to be the senior center. Forms return to nursing office at the town hall. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Councilor Rodriguez? Councilor Sams? I just wanted to comment on Councilor McGratton and Rodriguez's reports that uh, we got a lot of help from Councilor Rodriguez when we were looking at the uh, gathering initial information for uh, help for kids. Um, Councilor Rodriguez worked with Kate Sikorsky to get the cost of clinicians. So we actually have cost estimates for what it would take to, uh, to provide children with mental health support and counseling. That was very informative also talking with Kate at the finance meetings. Yeah, thank you. Any other liaison reports? Councillor Paul. Thank you. I just wanna uh, mention I went to the uh, Tent of the Parks and Rec uh, Commission uh, meeting. Uh, they met on Tuesday the 15th at the center in person. Um, they are working on reviewing the permit fees for the pavilions, along with adding the uh, pole barn as well as a new pavilion that will be on the green. Um, they're trying to simplify the fee process um, right now in the categories. Um, they're hoping to have a draft at their next meeting for that. Um, and then the other thing is um, there is a invasive species um, over at Highland Lake, um, Pragmites is what they are. It's it's um, it's uh, it's a large reed. You might have seen it over there, and it, it can approach on the beach. 
So they've been talking about trying to get that controlled. And I guess the best way to do that um, right now without any chemicals or, or anything like that is just to continue to cut it down. Um, but it is something that they are looking into because it is, is very invasive. Um, and they want to keep the beach open. And then the last thing I just wanted to bring up that they talked about at this meeting was um, the president of the Youth um, League, um, Tom Stagers, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right. He came and discussed um, putting up a new scoreboard at the Judge Crandall Field. Um, this would be all LED um, and it would be fully funded by Foxwoods um, Resort Casino and Joshua's Worldwide. They would have their logos on the side of them. Um, but all the costs and all the installation would be paid for by them. Um, and it's actually, they did pass a motion to approve that there at that meeting. Um, they don't have timelines right now. That's to be determined. Um, and that is my report. Thank you. Any questions for Councilor Paul? Okay, thank you. Uh, any other lady done reports? Hearing none, uh, Mayor. All right, so uh, just a quick rundown on COVID. It's dropped off yet again dramatically, 50% lower uh, this week than the past week. So it continues to decline. Uh, we're down to four hospitalizations in the entire New London County, which is uh, that's kind of like a July 19th type of date from last year. So one of the lowest numbers we've seen in a long time. Um, because of that, the state and uh, our local health districts, Ledgelite, which we're part of, and Uncas Health are moving to uh, data reporting once a week, as opposed to uh, currently they actually report daily. So they're going to reduce to once a week. They're also, and that starts on April 1st, they are also uh, ceasing uh, contact tracing starting April 1st. So they're not going to continue doing that. Uh, our regional CEO uh, was supposed to start this week. He had a, um, a personal issue and he couldn't start, but uh, he's back on track to start next week. So I'm looking forward to having him in and uh, letting that take off. And he's going to be shared between Ledger and uh, kind of a part part time in Basra. Uh, as Councillor Soms touched on, we did complete the budget work sessions, which was good. Um, ClearGov, I think it's it's uh, it's a bit of a learning process for all of us, uh, but ultimately I think it's going to prove to be a very very good tool. Uh, but most importantly, it's going to be very helpful for the public to be able to see all the different categories of expenditures and understand where we are uh, throughout the budget year. So that that will be positive. Uh, I spoke at a Chamber of Commerce leadership training seminar at Mohegan Sun. Uh, about 50 younger people there looking to get into uh, government, various levels of government. So uh, that was a great opportunity to uh, speak with a bunch of younger people and uh, from a nice cross section of people, which was great. So uh, that was that was nice. Um, I also shared with everybody that raised bill 5474. That is a bill uh, designed to. Uh, negate our ability to collect personal property tax uh, at Foxwoods. Uh, it has about a $600,000 impact to the town of Ledger. Uh, if it were to pass, it has about a $700,000 impact to the town of Montville, if it were to pass as well. Uh, Mayor McDaniel and I uh, jointly wrote a uh, written testimony. Uh, that bill is coming up for public hearing on Friday. Uh, it's, it has the ability to be a big issue. And like I said, it will, uh, you know, as you know, we won in the second circuit court, uh, federal court, and it has the ability to negate that, which will have a huge impact on our budgets and probably change what the level of services are we're going to be providing. Um, I did provide a mayoral proclamation to Alex Whittle, uh, our newest Eagle Scout. Um, the Eagle Scouts in Ledger have been very active for the past several years. And I would just urge uh, people with younger kids to get them into scouting because this group of, of kids that have come through in the past three years now, um, they're kind of running their course. They were a big group of kids and most of them are getting their Eagle Scout awards, but there aren't a lot of younger people behind them. So uh, it has the ability to have a huge break in, in scouting. So hopefully uh, people will still engage in scouting. I think it's a it's a great opportunity, and uh, these kids are, are uh, doing a heck of a job. Uh, tomorrow, we actually have our bond rating workshop. This is our 
uh, yet another bond uh, run for the school projects. So each time before we uh, sell bonds, we have to uh, get a rating from Standard & Poor's down in uh, Wall Street in New York. And um, we're gonna be doing that. So we're gonna spend about two hours tomorrow reviewing our financial positions overall uh, as we get ready for the April 6th uh, bond rating. Um, worked with the Rotary Club this past Saturday. Uh, the project is to install new uh, concrete stairs going from Kings Corner Manor up to a trail that actually connects to the Senior Center and Parks and Rec. And there was a set of stairs there before, but uh, the underside of them has kind of eroded and the steps, which were pressure treated six by sixes, were actually all tilted forward. So it created a, a terrible fall hazard. So uh, we removed all of those and now we're in the process of pouring concrete steps going up there so that hopefully uh, people at Kings Corner Manor will, will use the path uh, more frequently to cut through for um, you know, lunches at the senior center and activities and whatnot. Uh, and then the last thing I have for you, which I mentioned um, when Mr. Blicky was on, was um, we have a uh, Microsoft Teams meeting with the governor and Mark Fountain, who is the, uh, he's the senior advisor to the governor now, former mayor of Danbury. Uh, they are getting ready to roll out the Infrastructure Investment Act funding, and it covers a lot of different things. Obviously roads, bridges, uh, EV charging stations, uh, things that we don't necessarily have, but that the state has, including uh, rail and um, uh, public transportation, and of course, airports. So there are a number of items that are on there that are of interest to uh, the town of Ledger. So uh, public works director and town engineer, Steve Maslin and I will be participating in that. And uh, I'll be able to give you a report after we have that meeting. And that is all I have for you tonight. Oh, and I would also thank Councilor Rodriguez for a heck of a job with the Black History Month uh, posters and essays. Um, we did go to Juliet Long, we went to Gales Ferry School, and then we ended at Gallup Hill School and all the kids were thrilled and excited and it was great to see them all and those uh, posters will be going up in town hall shortly. That's all. Thank you, any questions for the mayor? Okay, very good. Uh, we have no old business. Uh, under new business, would anybody like to amend the agenda? Seeing none, uh, item number one, admin. I make a motion to appoint Mr. Paul Weitz Carver, Republican, Six Stoddard's View, Gales Ferry, to the Planning and Zoning Commission as a regular member to complete a three year term ending December 31st, 2023, filling a vacancy left by Mr. Woody. Second, Councillor Irwin. Any discussion? Uh, so just as some background, um, Mr. White's Carver is currently serving on the Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate member. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission Chairman Capon has requested Mr. White's Carver be appointed as, as a member of the committee. Mr. White's Carver has a bachelor's in economics, a master's in national security, served 39 years in the Navy, retired commanding officer of the sub base. Um, he's an active member of the community, previously served on EDC. He's currently serving as chairman of the Thames River Heritage Park. Um, you know, he's, he's been heavily involved. So just wanted to share that background. Thank you. Any questions? Roxanne, would you please call the roll? <laughs> Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I make a motion to appoint Mr. Howard Craig, unaffiliated, 64 Stony Brook Road, Gales Ferry, to the Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate member to complete a three-year term ending October 31st, 2023, filling a vacancy left by Ms. Evans. <clears throat> Second, Councilor Irwin. Thank you. Discussion? So 
<clears throat> Excuse me, just as some background, um, Mr. Craig is currently employed at the Submarine Learning Center with the Navy. He has a bachelor's in physics from the University of Maine, bachelor's excuse me, in workforce education and development, um, master in engineering, mad, and <clears throat> excuse me, master's in engineering management. He is retired from the U.S. Navy, um, where he served for 21 years. He's a longtime Ledyard resident. Uh, he's interested in serving the Ledyard community by becoming an active participant in how the town uses its resources. He's been a local and state notary since 2004. Um, and uh, to, to the mayor's point, he's been an active member of the community, volunteering as a scout leader for Gales Ferry Troop 12 for several years. What his application doesn't say, but I will say because I've known him for years and I think his family is awesome. He's also the proud dad of two Eagle Scouts. Um, he volunteers as needed at Ledyard Fair activities, community cemetery cleanups, Ledyard and Gales Ferry library work. Um, I think this town is gonna be super blessed to have him on planning and zoning. Thank you. Any questions? Roxanne, please call the roll. Mr. Tom? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed? Motion carries. Next item. I may, <clears throat> excuse me, I need a drink of water. Uh, I make a motion to adopt proposed amendments to policy and protocols for remote meeting participation as contained in the draft dated March 9th, 2022. Second that. <clears throat> okay. Discussion. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So this goes back to March of 2020 with the governor's executive order suspending in-person um, open meetings. And now that we are actively working toward in-person meetings again and planning to resume in April, we'd like to continue to improve transparency. Equipment has been purchased using grant funding provided for COVID um, provided for COVID related improvements that would facilitate hybrid meetings, meaning both in person and remote. So um, Chairman Dombrowski requested that the document be updated. Of particular note in your draft is that for hybrid meetings, the chairman or other designated facilitator shall be present at the physical meeting location along with a minimum number of other members of that committee, commission, or board required to be physically present in the posted meeting location. This is to avoid having residents show up for a meeting only to discover that all the members chose to participate remotely. The town council and its committees plan to have a quorum physically present for hybrid meetings. Within the draft is a chart that shows the minimum number of members that would be required to be physically present in the physical meeting space. <clears throat> Any questions? We're done. Roxanne, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I make a motion to adopt proposed amendments to the Town of Ledyard policy guidelines for electronic communication for elected officials and appointed volunteers as contained in the draft dated March 1, 2022. There a second. Second, Councilor Irwin. Thank you, discussion. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. In 2012, as the use of technology was becoming more integral in the town's day-to-day -day activities involving routine communications, 
the distribution of notices, agendas, minutes, and supporting background materials, the town council adopted a town of Ledyard policy guideline for electronic communications for volunteer and elected officials to alert volunteers to FOI requirements and caution them from participating in innocent email communications becoming unintended illegal meetings. Now we've proposed amendments um, to the draft, the Town of Ledyard policy guidelines for electronic communications um, <clears throat> to provide clarification and to again caution appointed volunteer members from having unintended illegal meetings and to encourage appointed volunteer members of town committees, commissions, and boards to set up a separate email account from their personal email account to receive town business information, such as agendas, minutes, and related information. The town currently pays $4 per year per email box and has assigned 150 mailboxes for a total of $600 a year. In addition to staff and elected officials, nearly 200 volunteers are appointed to fill the town's committee commissions and boards. Due to budget constraints and the continuous turnover of appointed volunteers, it would be a monumental task for staff to continually, continuously set up new mailboxes and close mailboxes. <clears throat> so this is um, again, a, uh, an encouragement and urging for appointed volunteers to set up a separate email account. And um, once we pass this, a notification will go out to each of them uh, encouraging them to do so. Thank you. Any questions? Roxanne, please call the roll. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item, community relations. I make a motion to adopt a proposed resolution regarding the town's position against use of racist and discriminatory language and behavior as contained in the draft dated March 16th, 2022. I second that, Councillor Rodriguez. Discussion. I would like to bring up that um, this came about <clears throat> due to the unfortunate events that took place at the high school um, girls basketball game back in February. And it was Councilor Somm suggested um, to the committee that, that we consider <laughs> adopting a similar statement um, and that, that, that the town council make a similar statement. And that, um, that is why we wanted to uh, do that here. At the, I don't know if I can read that or. Uh, actually, I would get a pretty, pretty, I think it's, we probably should be reading the resolution. Um, if, if you would like to do that. Sure. Uh, so the resolution regarding the town's position against the use of racist and discriminatory language behavior, be it resolved that the town of Ledger stands with our partners and surrounding communities against the use of racist and discriminatory language and behavior. If we have any hope of eliminating such derogatory terms and behavior in our society, we must begin in our homes, our local organization, and in our community. Adopted by the Ledger Town Council on. Or any questions, comments, Councilor Soms? I just want to give credit where credit is due. Um, we lifted these words from Superintendent Hartley's statement, which I thought was beautifully written. And we just said that, you know, we're saying the same thing. So I want to thank uh, uh, Superintendent Hartling for that. Thank you. And I, also would, I would also just like to add that this is, this is something the community, community Relations Committee is using as its platform um, on our mission statement as well. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, Roxanne, please call the roll. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. 
Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Song? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed? Motion carries. Very good. That was excellent. I like that one, actually. <laughs> um, item number six, finance. Uh, as Councilor Solms, I move to modify the scope of the town roof replacement project to include the following associated work to be accomplished within authorized $295,000 as approved by the townspeople on January 26, 2022. And the list goes as follows. Solar panel removal and possible reinstallation on the town hall and the Bill Library. Removal of the unused chimney at Bill Library. Cupola replacement at Town Hall. Ventilation improvements in the Town Hall attic and ceiling repairs at Town Hall. Second, um, Councilor Ryan. Thank you. So we've, we've talked a lot about the uh, removal of the solar panels. I'll, I'll just try and summarize. Um, they were installed, I think they're, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor, about 11 or 13 years old. Um, yep. The company that installed them is defunct but we do want to replace them if we can. So to put a new roof on the building, we have to take them off. Uh, and rather than put old panels, which are not performing as they originally did, uh, we would like to replace them with higher performing new panels. Um, there is an unused chimney at the Bill Library and in connection with replacing the roof there, we'd like to remove that unused chimney. There are a total of two. I drove by the library and I don't think that removing it, in other words, it's, it's it's, it's not a chimney that makes the library look better, in my personal opinion. I don't think that it would harm it uh, to remove it. And by removing it, that's one less roof penetration that we'd have to work around and it will save some money in roof replacement. The uh, cupola at Town Hall is, um, has some rot in it. And since it's deteriorated, it would be better to replace it than try and patch it and also put a roof under it. So the plan is to just take the cupola off the police station and put it there. Just kidding. Um, the other two ventilation improvements in Town Hall Attic uh, to improve airflow and do some repairs at Town Hall, uh, I would assume is due to some uh, leaks due to the current roof. Thank you, any questions? Rex Jan, please call the roll. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Sam? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Ingalls? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I move to authorize the mayor to submit a grant application to Ledger Rotary Foundation in the amount of $1,000 to be placed in the Youth and Social Services Enrichment Grant Fund to be utilized for Parks and Rec um, summer camp scholarships. Is there a second? second? That. Thank you. Discussion? So Ledger Youth and Social Services is requesting the grant in the amount of $1,000 for uh, Youth and Social Services Enrichment Grant Fund. The fund is used to assist Ledyard Social Services clients with full and partial scholarships for Ledyard Parks and Rec Summer Camp and other recreational activities. And as we all know, Ledyard Rotary does a great job fundraising and does many great projects for this community. And this, this is one of them. Thank you. Just question, uh, questions? Hearing none, Roxanne, please call the roll. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. I move to approve six tax refunds in the total amount of $20,410, I'm sorry, $20,410.17 with each exceeding the $2,400 in accordance with tax collector departmental procedures. Second. Second. 
So we, we have six requests for refunds. Uh, this commonly happens this time of year and also in the summertime. Um, what usually happens and is what happened in this case, uh, the escrow company makes a tax payment and the property owner makes a tax payment. So we end up with a duplicate. Often it's reported by the tax collector to the property owner, but in either case, uh, we need to get them their, their duplicate refund back. If the amount is greater than $2,400, it has to be approved by the town council. Um, there are a large number of overpayments that happen on a regular basis, and the mayor approves anything under $2,400, but due to the amounts uh, involved here, they had to come to the town council. All the paperwork is in order. We uh, have the reasons for the, it, they were all overpayments. Um, we've got the property location. We've got proper signatures on them, so I recommend we approve. Thank you. Any questions? Roxanne, call the roll. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Son? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. <clears throat> Nine and four zero opposed. Motion carries. Next item. Point of order. Uh, Mr. Ryan was called in place of Mr. Irwin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I I'm, thought that was odd. I did. You know. <laughs> I just called you twice, Mr. Irwin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. In favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. I thought I just missed it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably me. I probably looked at the wrong line. Uh, next item, land use. Uh, I make a motion to set a hybrid in-person and video conference public hearing on Wednesday, April 13th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. to receive comments and recommendation regarding proposed amendments to ordinance number 300-008 in ordinance establishing planning and zoning fees for subdivision, new construction, alteration, change of use and zoning permit applications in the town of Ledger as contained in the draft dated February 1st, 2022. Second. Discussion. So this would set a, a hybrid meeting to go over some uh, the changes um, that are, you'll see in the draft. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Roxanne, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Som? Yes. Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Mrs. Engel? Yes. Mr. Irwin? Yes. Ms. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGratton? Yes. Mr. Paul? Mr. Paul. Oh, yes. Okay. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Uh, before we adjourn, I'd just like to remind everybody that the celebration for Linda is on April 2nd from uh, noon to three. Um, and also, I mentioned to most of the council earlier, but uh, we want to do a redo of the council photograph to, to, to get a new picture to put up on the website. Uh, so. Come dress in your Sunday best for on the <laughs> April on April thirteenth for our new, for our next meeting. Um, with that, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second that. Uh, this meeting is adjourned without exception. Thank you, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.